Hello, arty peoples, and welcome to a pre-recorded episode of Jerry's Live. Now, emphasis on the pre-recorded part of that, because I'm not here. I'm actually off at a residency in France. So I, uh, unfortunately, was not able to actually make it live, but we are going to make sure that our moderators and everybody in the team, as well as myself, we're going to be answering those questions for you guys. So please feel free to pop any of your comments and you know responses and questions in the chat below, and we will make sure to get back to you. So let's jump over to the episode. Hello, arty peoples, and welcome to another episode of Jerry's Live. My name is Emmy Klein, and I'm your host this evening. And today, I figured we would go on a field trip, and let's let's paint big. Let's paint a mural. <laughs> Welcome back to the show, guys. Uh, today, I figured we'd go big. And so uh, I'm out here at a friend's house. Uh, we're gonna paint a mural on her fence. Um, so when it comes to painting a mural, there's a lot of things that are gonna go into it. Number one is your weather. And we, knock on wood, might be fighting the, we the weather today. Uh, it's saying that it's not gonna rain, but I'm looking at these clouds and we'll see. Uh, so, I mean, we're going to try and do this as best we can. I swear for my boss that's watching, the cameras are protected. We have tents. We're going to make sure that they don't get wet. <laughs> uh, but that is kind of part of painting outside. There is a possibility that you're going to get rained on. There's a possibility that it's going to be cold or hot or just direct sunshine, which when I was out here priming this wall, uh, I was in direct sunshine and it was bright and hot. So. It's just one of those things that you are going to be out in the elements to just prepare for that. I'm already covered in sunscreen. I have a hoodie on because it's a little cold. We are, it's early in the morning. We wanted to get started really, really early. So large cup of coffee. <laughs> and uh, we're just going to get started as fast as we can so we can make sure that we kind of fight the rain. Okay, so the other thing you guys want to make sure that you have is permission of where you're painting. <laughs> I cannot stress that enough. Please do not get in trouble for creating art. Uh, as much as I want you all to paint the world and make it beautiful, we have to do it in a respectful manner. So I happen to be at my friend's place. Uh, this is her wall. She owns this wall, not her neighbor. Make sure you double check uh, before you just go out and paint your, your fence. Um, but the other thing is that sometimes when you are painting outdoor in public, uh, you might need permits. You might need things like that, permission from the building owner as well as you might literally have to get permission from the city. They might consider it a sign. So just make sure you go to your local ordinances. <laughs> I think I just saw a bug. Excuse me. <sighs> I think I just ate a bug. It's fine. I have coffee. It's extra protein for my breakfast. You're also going to be battling bugs. <laughs> So just make sure you do check with your local ordinances and make sure that you do have the right permissions before you just go out and paint a wall. Um, but I did double check to make sure that we're good on this one. Uh, but uh, her neighbor's house is not that far away. Uh, they do have a shed right next to this wall that we're going to be painting on. Uh, so I don't want to use something that's going to kind of spread like spray paint. So sometimes spray paint is not the best choice. Uh, so let's talk about materials that I'm going to be using. Uh, now, if you guys are interested in any of the materials that I use, make sure to go to the website, jerrysartorama.com, and type in today's class code into the search bar. Our teacher's cart should come up with everything in it, so you guys can check it out that way. But first and foremost, paint. I did not want to use spray paint just because of how I can probably touch the, the shed. She does not own that. I don't want to paint that. That's going to be a problem. So I, I just wanted to go ahead and use acrylic paints on this. Uh, I do like using artist grade acrylics because I'm gonna have to do way less layering. It's a really nice quality paint that I can put on the wall. So I'm gonna be using the Lucas Krill Studio. Uh, it's also a nice consistency. I like that it's not a heavy body, it's a soft body. So it's also not super fluid. It won't be dripping down my wall unless you want that effect, which is great, but Excuse the school bus. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. We are outside in in the world. You're going to hear things. Uh, we're also on a hill. <laughs> so uh, the, the wall might not look perfectly straight, but that's because it does go out of slant. But, you know, we'll, we'll deal with that. Um, but you might hear birds and school buses. People. 
dog barking. All the things. All right, so the brushes I'm gonna be using are appropriate for the size of the wall that I'm painting. Uh, I do have the Pro Control uh, for my large areas of paint that I need to lay down. I have the smaller size as well as the six inch. And then I have a variety of our Mural Max brushes. Uh, you don't wanna use tiny brushes on such a large canvas. We need to make sure that it's appropriately sized. Uh, so I have a variety of these brushes. Again, everything's in the teacher's car for you to check out. Uh, I'm also gonna be using a butcher's tray. The reason why is because whenever I'm painting on the wall, I don't wanna have to, you know, have to balance a bunch of paint that could slide off and drop onto the floor. So that butcher tray having the lip is gonna be really, really helpful. Also, if I do end up mixing a color, I can mix a large quantity in that to where I have enough for the whole mural. And then I don't have to try and remix it and then rematch the color, which is a nightmare sometimes. So uh, for the most part, I am gonna be using a lot of the paints straight out of the tube because that's how I designed the mural. But uh, as far as the wall though, it is officially prepped. I have uh, come out here on a previous day. I made sure to clean and paint the wall. Uh, which means I had to get uh, some weeds and stuff off of the bottom. I had to dust it off with a broom and then I have uh, primed it with kills. Uh, so that's an outdoor primer. It's a stain resistant uh, you know, primer as well. Uh, just because this part is metal and then in between the metal uh, kind of panels, I have wooden beams. So I'm gonna be painting across all of that and it does have some texture. <laughs> which is going to be interesting to paint on because it's not a flat wall. Um, but, uh, you know, as long as I can take that into account, I think I should be pretty good. Uh, but that's why I definitely wanted to prime this so it is nice and ready to go. We're not going to paint on unprimed canvas or unprimed panels. We want to make sure that they're all nice and ready for us to go. So same thing with the wall. If you do want to have a mural where you don't have a white primer underneath, you can always do a clear primer if that's something that you're interested in. Uh, but this wall is ready to go. I need to start painting before we lose too much time uh, just to kind of get going for the day. It's a big painting. We're going to need all the time that we have. So I am going to start off with a doodle grid, uh, which means... Pastel! <laughs> so I just grabbed the uh, Jumbo Pastel from uh, Soho and this is the Warm Gray number 4. Uh, I thought that black might be a little too intense for the doodle grid. Uh, and then I, any color might affect kind of the under or the, the paint layers that go on top of it. So I thought this warm gray would be nice and neutral as well as not too, too dark for when I put my imagery onto the wall. But I'm gonna go ahead and doodle this up. So let's get started. Doing the grid, doing the grid. That's gonna make it in the camera or in the <laughs> shots, isn't it? It's all right, okay. I think that's it. All right, so scribbles are on the wall. Um, and you know, it's very clearly I'm just scribbling. That's all I, all this is. Uh, so now I'm gonna take a, put a photo of this wall with my scribbles on it so I can superimpose my sketch onto the scribbles and use this as almost like you would with a traditional grid method, but have these lines be my point of reference where I can transfer my drawing digitally to in real life. But for you guys to see that, that's probably gonna be a little bit easier through a screen recording. So we're gonna jump to that and let's let me show you. Okay guys, so here is my initial sketch onto the original photo of the wall. Uh, you can see the wall is that pure white, bright and sunny when I took it the first time when I primed, primed it. Uh, so there's my digital sketch on top. I do have a you know rough color as well uh, of what I was planning on doing. But if I turn off the color and insert this new photo layer of, if, here, let me turn off the lines as well so you guys can actually see, there are all of my scribbles of the doodle grid. So if I actually take my lines, I can adjust this now. And nope, not that. Sorry, hold on. Let me make sure I'm on the right layer. That's usually helpful. <laughs> All right, so I can take this and adjust my lines uh, and let's do distort. 
I can tweak it slightly if I'm at a slight different angle or if I need to get bigger, you know, I can adjust this to where it's going to be exactly how I planned it. Um, and it's going to be on the wall exactly where I had placed it originally. Uh, now this is my easiest way of doing this. You guys can absolutely do this on a, you know, just pen and paper and then project it, uh, whatever works best for you. But I'm going to get this fully tweaked on my computer here. And then um, let's start the official drawing. Okay guys, so I have my initial sketch up. It is not 100% complete. I did not want to fully detail that center flower uh, for a couple of reasons. Um, yellow paint is generally, in, in most cases, a very transparent color. And that pastel that I used to sketch it is going to affect it. So I did not want a ton of that in there. I'm also going to be spraying water. This is just water in my aqua mist bottle and I'm using an easy wiper to kind of minimize those lines as much as possible just mostly within that shape because that is such a bright bright color and i don't want it to get desaturated at all with either the doodle grid or the sketch that i did um, but other than that i'm going to start laying down big shapes of color i also did not uh finish the orchids at the end uh mostly because that's just taking me kind of a while and we might get rained out so <laughs> I'm trying to just lay down as much as possible before the weather turns on me. So uh, I'm going to start getting painting. Um, but first, I'm going to kind of clean up that center flower just a little bit just to kind of make sure that it's nice and bright for that yellow paint to go down. Then I'll be good to kind of go on the top with details and stuff. Uh, but let's get painting before it starts raining. <laughs>
All right, guys, so it is later today. Uh, we're, it's about five o'clock, I believe. Um, we're gonna officially call it a day. It is actually starting to kind of rain again. Um, we looked at radar and it's getting worse. So I'm gonna stop for today and stop putting, oh, you know, acrylic paint on the wall. So it, this uh, will actually have a set uh, time amount to dry before it actually opens up and gets really gross. Uh, so we are gonna have to postpone the rest of the painting until a prettier day. Um, I know it's not gonna be tomorrow because tomorrow's also rainy, but we will get back here. Now, before I officially move, uh, get out of here and clean up, uh, you can see I did leave a lot of like spaces in between the layers where they're gonna be. Uh, the reason why is because I'm gonna actually have uh, acrylic marker at the end where I'm going to go over them and it's gonna be very, very line heavy, which is going to kind of make it all kind of come together. Now. I will say initially I was going to do some kind of transitions between colors and, and color shifts. With the wall being as textured as it is, uh, this is honestly taking me a lot longer than I thought it was going to just because of every one of those little dips that go into the wall, I have a very hard time trying to keep my lines kind of straight. And then on top of that, um, just kind of painting in those little nooks and crannies, which this is outdoor painting. It's part of it. Uh, but it's very, very different from painting on a flat surface. So uh, it is definitely taking me longer. But I think I'm also going to have to readdress how I'm going to do some kind of color transitions. I think I'm going to have to be a little bit more graphic. So I'm going to give this marker a try because I know bugs. Uh, I'm going to actually give the marker a try before we leave today because I want to see how it stands up uh, as far as, you know, kind of in the weather and everything. I'm a very small test, but I just want to see kind of how it works and how it looks and how well it stands up before we get a chance to come back here. So I'm going to do that and then we will, uh, well, it'll be like a 10 second transition for you guys. Me, oh no, there's another bird. I, I don't know what it is. <laughs> I swear, this is like the movie Birds Coming to Life. They are, they're at, like, they're coming for me, guys. <laughs> Just, so many birds have died. Moment. Christina, you've witnessed, witnessed, she's shaking her head, yes. Um, yeah, all right, guys, we did move the bird feeder. I think they're angry. So uh, we're gonna move it back because they're, they're being extra, but anyway. I'm going to do this and then, you know, you guys will have the beautiful mu movie transition of like whenever we get back here. So, haha. Yeah, hello, everybody. We are back for day two officially on the mural. So uh, it's early again. Uh, you're going to hear a lot of birds because they are being extra this morning. <laughs> but it, we're outside. It is what it is. So today the game plan is I'm going to finish laying down the uh, base color. And if I have time, because again, we're still kind of fighting some possible rainstorm situation going on, maybe I, it's beautiful right now. So I think not gone wood, not good wood, uh, we'll be okay with rain. Um, uh, but I will say it was funny last time we packed everything up and it like, as soon as we got the car loaded, the, the sky opened up. So we ended at the right time last time. <laughs> But uh, hopefully today will be nice and uh, calm as far as weather is concerned, but it's going to be hot. So we're going to try and move as quickly as possible. But I do have some colors I need to tweak, like that purple for the uh, purple flowers that are kind of uh, bordering on the outside right now. Uh, it's a little dark on what I was looking for, so I might have to change that color slightly. But I'm going to lay down the rest of the colors before I officially tweak anything. One thing I do know I need to tweak though is that green. That green is like poof, Kelly green, uh, which is great color green, but it does not really occur naturally. <laughs> uh, it is, it's just a little too extra green. So I kind of want to tone that down and desaturate it um, with a couple of colors. So I might try to mix a couple on my palette before I officially commit, but we will record that for you guys to see whatever I mix. But let's get started.
Okay guys, so that is it for today. Uh, we do have a storm rolling in. We've been checking radar all day. Uh, the storm's rolling in pretty fast, so we need to make sure everything's packed up and the paint on the wall is dry before it officially gets here. Um, but didn't get as far as I wanted to. So I did get the first base layer down. Um, as you can see, some colors are more opaque than others, and that's just kind of how it is with you know paint. Um, but what I'm gonna probably end up doing off camera is a second layer on some of the areas that I didn't actually get a nice decent coat on just yet. Um, and then I'm probably going to have to tweak that purple just a little off camera, as well as a couple of shading areas within the flower. Um, so that's probably gonna be done off camera. Uh, I will make note of all the colors that I use so you guys can check it out. But then uh, we're gonna have to come back for outlines it's gonna be a very line heavy mural and I'm very excited. Also a little scared because of the corrugation of this wall, which I've been fighting with the whole time. Cause it's not flat. It is definitely not flat, but I want it to look flat. So we will get there. But, oh, uh, a couple things I forgot to mention at the beginning. Um, the sketch that had been on there, the blue lines that I had had, uh, sketched my drawing on, not the, well actually the doodle grid's still up there too. Uh, all that has been up for several days. It's been raining off and on. Uh, and that's why I'm really excited about the Soho pastels being what I use as a sketch. And it has not moved. It got a little bit lighter in some areas, but really that was it. I also did off camera finish the sketch <laughs> just because it was the same method that you guys had seen before. But I did finish sketching the, the orchids and the center flower as well. But that I actually did with graphite instead so just a you know Cezanne pencil uh, and the reason why is because I did not want that again that color that yellow is just such a high hit key color that I did not want my paint being affected by that kind of mixing in the other colors it didn't matter but that's the one area that I'm like Ugh. so I'm a little concerned about the graphite as well but I think I'll be okay because that's gonna mostly be where the lines are so any kind of like shading and things can just be around it i think we'll be okay um any other things oh oh the other thing i'm not using any drying retarder that was that was something that i thought about while i was painting and i thought think you guys are probably asking is she using drying retarder because i'm in the sun i'm outside there's wind blowing which you would all think that acrylics would dry really really fast no i'm just putting down a good puddle of paint into my butcher's tray uh and that whenever I go to grab some paint, I continuously leave it in a puddle. So even though it might get a little bit of a skin formed, I'm constantly stirring it. So it's not really drying or having a chance to dry. It might thicken a bit over time. Um, but that was also why uh, with the blue flowers, the lighter areas, I got a fully opaque coverage with that paint just because the cyan that I mixed in with the ultramarine is an opaque color. But I did two coats on that one. So that's kind of like where that's finished. Uh, and I did a little bit of a gradient from more cyan to a little bit more ultramarine just because I wanted to see if that's gonna work with that corrugation. Uh, but because that was a mixed color, I had to make sure I fully laid it all down and it is 100% done because mixing another color to match it is kind of a bit of a pain. So for right now, this is where we are after day two. And then I'm going to, like I said, off camera, do a second coat, maybe tweak that purple a little bit and lay down some kind of fun colors in the center flower. I will notate that. And then we will be back for outlines 
and on another sunshiny day. So I will see you guys then. 10 seconds of transition. Hello everybody, welcome back. Uh, it's another morning for me. I know it's been like 10 seconds for you guys, but um, truth be told, a lot of time has passed. <laughs> uh, uh, it's becoming a running joke amongst us in the crew that um, this shoot might be a little cursed, but we've had to reschedule filming this several times. Uh, we've been trying to get back over and over and over again, but just the weather and then scheduling and, you know, we're still in the pandemic. So there was a little bit of a scare there and, you know, it's just been rescheduled. I, we were trying to think about how many times and it's, it's definitely over five. I just, uh, we've lost count. So time has passed and you will notice that in, uh, what you're about to see, uh, more specifically, I've done a lot of painting. The last time you guys have seen this, it was a big mess. It was a big mess because I was fighting against time. Um, you know, it's been time for me, so I'm trying to remember exactly what happened. But yeah, I, I was fighting against the weather and trying to get it in before it rained and all of that. So uh, I wanted to walk you guys through what the progress that I've made. Uh, and unfortunately, we weren't able to get that on camera just because we were running out of time. Uh, so let's go through what I've done so far. All right, I got my coffee down. So the very first thing that I tackled was that yellow flower. Uh, I really wanted to get those transitions really pretty and give it depth right in the center. So when you saw this mural, that was the first place your eye went. I wanted it to have the most contrast. So right here, you can see I have a dark, dark red, and then I have a really nice bright yellow right around it to just really provide that contrast. Now the colors that I used are right here. I used lemon yellow. As I fall over, cadmium orange hue for like those those lighter kind of orangey areas right there, and then I have a little bit of a darker red, the cadmium uh, red light. So this is the the hue again. Um, now that as it falls over is like right here where you guys get that little bit of a darker orange because it's it's a bright orangey red, but it still has a darker value. Uh, just kind of right in there to give it a little bit of a pop. Now, this right here is the cadmium red deep. So uh, right there in the center where I have those darker values, that is the cadmium red deep. Uh, honestly, it might have been mixed with a little bit of the, yeah, because you can see it right here. Um, that is mixed with a little bit of the permanent violet, I believe. Hold, please. I need to go get that color. Bang, bang. All right. I honestly, time has passed. Forgot I use this. Uh, this is the cadmium red deep and the permanent violet. Now I actually touched that color in because I had originally gone in with the cadmium red deep and it wasn't dark enough. So I slightly adjusted it when I went to the next layer out, which is this kind of red ring. So it is uh, this outer, just on the top here, is the cadmium red deep. And then I have right down here, as it goes behind that yellow flower, that darker value where I mixed in a little bit of the purple, the, the permanent violet. So, there's a grasshopper. I'm gonna name him Greg. This is Greg the grasshopper. Hi buddy, bugs are everywhere. <laughs> so that is the center of the flower. Now, I also almost forgot, just on the tips of the flower, kind of right where the light would be hitting it, I did touch in a little bit of rose just for a little visual interest, just a little warmth kind of coming in. And that also brings in the pinks kind of from the outside layer into that yellow. So just to kind of marry it and make it look a little bit more intentional. So the next layer is the leafy greens. And the way that I approached that, uh, I did the same thing for all of the greens within the mural, just to kind of, again, keep that color continuing throughout the whole thing and make it look intentional and cohesive. Now you guys know, I started off with the permanent green light. This was the wrong green. This was definitely the wrong green. It was too like Kelly green, kind of almost Christmassy, ridiculous, like green. This 
the color doesn't really naturally occur in the world. Like you can see it here and there, like touches in leaves, but it's like, oh, there's a bug on me. There's a bug on me, <laughs> sorry. Uh, this, this color, you can find it here and there within like the natural realm, but overall it's just a little too like synthetic-y green appearing almost. Like this just doesn't feel natural and you guys saw it. It was just the wrong green. So I fixed it. The way that I fixed it is by mixing in Viridian, which is a crazy, not natural green with cadmium orange. So these two colors made the perfect green. It's a, a little bit almost like olivey green. Uh, kind of reminds me of like sap green. Sap green is a great green for using in uh, naturalistic kind of colors. But with that, that's that kind of dark color right here is these two mixed together. Now, as you can see, I kind of ended up transitioning to a lighter green. And when I did that, I just mixed in the yellow. So that just gives me a little bit of a lighter value without getting chalky. And that's why I'm not mixing in titanium white. This layer is the, the pink layer where I actually ended up using the magenta red primary. And then uh, for it transitioning closer to those like purples that I wanted, I actually ended up using the lavender mixed in a little bit just on the tips here, just to lighten it and kind of bring in those purples. So I wanted it to transition outward from yellow to red, to pink, to purple, to blue, then to turquoise, almost like a rainbow and kind of have it transition from one color to the next and have it kind of make sense. So you guys saw when I first started the purple flowers, they, I had used just the mauve, mauve alone, and while I was just blocking in those original shapes and just getting them down because I wanted to make sure I didn't lose my drawing, I knew it was the wrong value. I wanted it to be lighter and I wanted it to be more of like a lavender kind of lilac color. I love this mauve, don't get me wrong, but I needed to lighten that value just to kind of bring it all together. Um, that mauve was also a little too like red of a purple, so I wanted to also uh, bring it more over to that blue side just to kind of have that transition between the reds and then the next layer of the blues so what I did is I have mauve and I have lavender um, this is no longer just lavender because this was about about that full of lavender and then I took the mauve and I just squirted a bunch of it into my lavender and then shook it like a maraca for a very long time and then I got this purple so this is a combination of the lavender with the mauve and it worked so well. Uh, I wanted to have that mauve right in the center of the purple flowers and transition out to this lighter value, but I ended up not doing that just because of the general corrugated metal uh, of, the, of the fence and more specifically this right here. I knew that flower down there at the bottom was going to be very difficult because the center of the flowers here and it would have to transition onto that in order for it to make sense overall. And that is just an incredibly difficult thing to do with this space and make it look cohesive. It was one of those things that I just, it's going, I would be fighting it the whole time. So I decided to not do it. I just laid down that basic level of purple. And I think with lines that I'm about to do, uh, it's going to look great. So the next layer is the blue. I had started off with ultramarine blue. It was too dark and I knew that. So the great thing is I mixed in the cyan blue, which is a very opaque pigment. You saw on the time-lapse how much coverage uh, that really, really did. Whereas like the transparent colors were a little bit more patchy. I had to just put more layers on those, but the cyan blue is super opaque. So it covered. Uh, but I really loved it for the inside of the flowers. Now the outside of the flowers, I wanted that darker blue. So I actually just mixed these two together because this was too dark. This was too light mixed together. Is that perfect shade of like pretty royal blue? So the center of the flowers is probably the only thing in this entire mural that I'm not crazy about. I'm not going to lie. I don't love the colors that I chose. Uh, I know. I know I had the cyan on my palette and I used 
the cadmium orange and the lemon yellow and the rose on the tips. I just, a combination of those together, which is really funny because it worked great for the, this center flower. Not crazy about it right there, but that's exactly what I did. And I kind of painted it all the same way. Uh, now the last but not least are the orchids at the end. Now the orchids at the end, I used my favorite color, turquoise, which is also a very opaque pigment as well. So uh, this was a great base color, laid down a lot of color as uh, the first layer. Then for the transitions and the shading, I used the cadmium red deep hue. So that's how I got those like darker reds that transition into that purpley, that transition into the turquoise, is just these two colors mixed together. I absolutely love that transition. It makes me so happy. And it was just the very last little thing that I painted now. In painting all of these, I approached them all the exact same way, and I want to walk you through how I did that. All right, so I wanted to show you kind of how I approached painting all of these different colors. Uh, I approached them all the same way. The first thing I did was lay down a base color. You saw that in my initial time lapse kind of section. Uh, if I needed to adjust the color, I did that, and then I went in to do those transitions. So. For this yellow one, that's why I have this one last little petal that I haven't painted because I wanted to show you and you guys don't know how satisfied it's going to be to paint that in because I've just been waiting and I've been staring at it and I've just been very hyper aware of it. So I have my lemon yellow, my cadmium orange hue and that cadmium red light hue. Uh, those were the transitions I had in these outer petals. Remember I had the darker reds in there as well uh, for the as I got like kind of deeper into that flower. But for this one, I only need these three colors uh, and you can see, or you can see all the different colors that I used throughout the rest of the, the flowers in the mural. So now that I have my base layer down, it's fully dry. Uh, I'm gonna actually start in with the same color, the base layer, right? Cause I know the outside is going to be that yellow because it's going to be where the light is hitting it I want it to be that lighter shade right and I'm not doing this for coverage I'm doing this so when I get to the next layer I can transition that color and mix it on the wall now the way that I did this was anywhere where I had another petal going on top of this one is where I started throwing in a little bit of shadow. And I did that with the cadmium orange, just to kind of deepen that color and give it that dimension, right? So this whole area right here has a petal on top of it. And I only had the cadmium orange on the tip of my brush. So you saw when I drag it through, it almost gives me that perfect gradient that I'm looking for. Now, if I need to make it darker over here, because I know that petal is going deeper into the flower, I'm going to add in some more of this cadmium orange and have it transition into that lemon yellow. Now you can see up here, I had a uh, lighter on the outside and then it kind of almost darkened. Uh, it has these darkened, like almost like little forks. That's the shape of the petal that I wanted to kind of show. It's where they kind of go up like that and then it transitions into that, you know, same gradient. So it's the same process just to kind of feather it out and blend it out all while going around the corrugated metal. So if I need to get my brush clean, all I'm doing is mostly knocking off that cadmium orange because I have that yellow is still in, in the bristles and it's mostly a dry brush at this point, but I'm just transitioning. And the cool thing is, odds are people aren't gonna get super close to your work 
when it's a mural. They're going to be looking at it as a whole from kind of a far away. And so if your transitions aren't super perfect, they're not going to notice. Also, it's painting. Brush strokes are okay. You know, having that artist hand be visible in your work is great. I absolutely love it. And I think we need more. Now, right here is where it's really starting to get back into that petal. I'm going to add a little bit of this cadmium red light just to darken that value and kind of push it back in space. And this little point right here is why I'm using the round because I want that kind of point of my brush to give me that almost triangle shape. Again, if it's not perfectly like a triangle shape, that's okay because I'm gonna also be outlining this. So, so now that I have the majority of the yellow in, I'm gonna actually take this rose and almost like a little highlight, I'm kind of more or less like dry brushing it on. I don't want to have that blend perfectly into the yellow, but that's how I got those little pops of the rose going throughout, especially right here in the center where it has a lot more of the rose just because the center of my flower, I wanted it to be that lighter pink value to pop up against that really dark value. Now that it's officially painted, so excited, I can start on all the lines. All right, so I'm gonna be using the Montana acrylic paint pens uh, in black and possibly white. I have the white ones uh, just in case, but I'm not 100% sure. I got those two colors mostly because the black is going to be great for the majority of this, but if there's a darker value, especially like the blue, the inner lines might not be visible. So I grabbed the white marker just in case and the outside of the, the whole mural is white. So it'll kind of pull it in. But if I do that, I need to make sure that it does occur in other places in the mural, just to kind of, again, be cohesive. So I have two different sizes. This is the 15 millimeter, and then this is uh, fine, which the millimeter is not listed on the marker, which is fine. It's fine. This is my chunky one. This is my fine liner. Um, I mostly want the lines to be chunky. The reason why is because I want them to be visible from a decent far distance away. Um, the reason why I have this fine liner is because this is corrugated metal and I don't know if this is going to do well in those areas that kind of recess back. So I'm going to mostly use this for the flatter areas of my mural. And then I'm going to be using this for those little areas that I can't really get to for this one. Also, uh, I probably gonna use the fine liners on the inside of the flowers and then use the chunky one as like my outline for each one, just for a little line variation and make it look again, cohesive. So I better get started and uh, let's knock this out.
So I've never been more excited to finish a project in my life. I am so excited. It is done. Also, hopefully you can hear me. Uh, I, there's a lot of like cicadas today. They just decided to like grace us with their presence. So screaming bugs are in the background. Also, I think our generator of the neighbor. What, what are we going to do about that? You know, it is what it is. But it's officially done. I finished it. And, wow, cicadas, really? That's, <laughs> that's really extra. Maybe they'll die down in a minute. I don't know. All right, so I just wanted to quickly say thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the process, and I hope you are inspired to do your own mural. Now, before we officially get out of here, I wanted to quickly go over all the materials that I used and kind of how much. Uh, you guys know I've been using the Lucas Curl Studio. I have uh, the 500 milliliter bottles. The only one I mostly went through was Mauve. The rest of them I still have extra paint left over and I painted this entire fence. I'm, I'm so impressed with, I always forget like just how far this paint goes. So I bought way more than that to do this mural and now I'm just gonna have a bunch of extra paint. So now I just have to do more murals, right? I mean, I have a huge empty wall at home. Uh, anyway, uh, the other thing I used were these markers, like I said before, and uh, I only used one of the fine uh, for the entire mural. And I did actually switch out my uh, 15 millimeter marker. Now, it wasn't because I ran out of the acrylic ink inside. It was just because the nib was getting a little like destroyed. <laughs> So if I had actually just bought extra nibs, it would have been fine. So one marker of each size was perfect for this. And I am so happy I got the smaller one because this trying to go into all of those corrugated areas and all the little cracks and crevices was, it was never going to happen. So I thought ahead and this was like definitely a savior for getting those lines to look as like pristine as possible really and I think I think I did a pretty good job so uh if you guys have mural ideas let me know what, what do you think you should do next but I hope you guys enjoyed the video make sure you hit the like button and subscribe because obviously this is pre-recorded because I'm in France so if you want to see what I'm doing over there make sure you hit the subscribe button ring the bell to notify whenever I go live because it's not a set schedule so I will see you guys later bye